first shot score of goal, and Massachusetts takes the lead. Hello, everybody, and welcome in to our hockey spotlight as we get ready for the start of the 2024-25 season. My name is Jay Burnham, voice of the Minutemen, alongside my broadcasting partner, UMass alum, all around UMass Twitter celebrity, Nathan Strauss. And uh, Nathan, throughout the season, we're going to be checking in with everybody each week on this platform, hopefully have some conversations with players, with coaches, with alum. Today, we'll be talking with Lyndon Alger, but you and I will be talking about what an exciting beginning to this season is going to be. Are you jacked up, my friend? A hundred percent. I mean, you know, the off season, the Zamboni of the off season has just, you know, cleared the ice and uh, nothing like getting ready for game one. So really, really excited. And of course, you know, Bentley this weekend and then Vegas next weekend, which you'll be at. So I think one of the fun things we'll do throughout this space here is we'll introduce the fans to some of the broadcasters as well. You're going to be taking a, a stronger lead in the TV and radio side, we've got our good buddy Cooper Boardman coming back. He'll be on the radio call this weekend with UMass alum and a buddy of yours and mine, Colin Casey, who returns. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll certainly um, introduce people to those to those folks that are part of our broadcast team as well. But let's start here with the schedule. Okay, you start at Bentley. What are we going to expect this weekend, competition level wise, and how you know head coach Greg Carver will will roll things out. It's going to be a good test, I think, to start off this to start off this season. So you get one game, one official game this weekend before the exhibition on Sunday, which is not um, counted for competitive purposes, but still a good chance to get out to the Mullen Center and, and get basically a sneak preview of what you'll get for this UMass team. But Bentley, you know, in the Atlantic, they typically play a bigger, heavier style. The Atlantic hockey, they they most teams in that league play slightly older, slightly bigger, slightly heavier. Last year, BU played them in the first game of the season, and I believe they actually got taken to overtime. They ended up winning in OT, but they're no slouches. And for a UMass team that's amongst the 10 youngest teams in the country, I believe uh, the great Jill Jacuba told us that I think UMass is the sixth youngest team of the 64. So the top, what, 15% of youngest teams. It'll be a good test. UMass probably favored in terms of the skill and maybe the speed, but you know, nothing's easy when you go on the road, especially it's the first competitive action. Yeah. And it's kind of interesting, you know, nine incoming freshmen, I'll I'll get your take on, on kind of that class here in in just a second, but you then go to Vegas, as you mentioned, you've got a tough game against Omaha, then either Minnesota or air force. The first home game won't be until the 18th with back-to-back games against sacred heart and a home and home. So, I mean, this thing comes at you. It usually does right with the non-conference, the way that UMass schedules, but uh, you have to be ready right away when you make that trip to Las Vegas. Yeah, and this schedule is really weird because I think there's a chance that you get through that Vegas trip and you get through the Sacred Heart home and home the next week and then the first Hockey East games against UConn. And the first month of the season, you can really say, hey, we've only played two home games in our first eight, nine games. Yeah. Then you go on the road for two games to UVM. This team basically plays a majority of their home games in the middle and end of the season, which I think is pretty beneficial for a young team. I will say you got to circle that Friday game in Vegas because Omaha, a team that plays similarly to UMass, another team that's going to be right there in that 8-16 to pairwise range. They were just two or three pairwise spots ahead of UMass last spring. That's a huge test. And you really want to win that game so you can then get Minnesota the next day, assuming they beat Air Force. All right. So you look at the the roster as a whole. You've got nine incoming freshmen. I, I'm just going to try to pick out because uh, throughout the course of of these segments, we're not going to really elongate things here. Uh, who who on the freshman class are you most excited to see take the ice? I think you're looking at the D pair of of Larry Keenan and Francesco Del Elche. The two of them played together in Penticton for one of the best coaches uh, in the junior scene in, in Canada and in, in arguably the strongest program in the BCHL. Um, and Keenan, fourth rounder of the Red Wings, someone with great pedigree. Del Elche spent some time at, at the Montreal Canadiens development camp. UMass has always been a defense first school under Greg Carville. And, and by defense first, I mean the defensemen are the players who come out of UMass with the most pedigree. And you think about the great guys who have been brought in in the same class. Zach Jones and Matt Kessel were in the same class. Ryan Ufko and Scott Morrow, same class. I think there's a really good chance that these two guys for the next two, three years are going to have that kind of impact. And I think they're going to have to, too, because for the first time in a long time, 
there is no returning true number one guy with, with, with Scotty going to the Canes and Ryan, you know, battling for a spot right now with the Preds. I love how this staff is able to kind of bring along class by class. Right. And so now you look at a freshman class last year, that is probably going to take center stage as sophomores, Idar Sunyev, along with Musa, uh, Van Tassel. So you've got this kind of growth that goes incrementally year by year. Who do you think in that sophomore stretch can take the biggest step forward this year? I think it's going to be Don Flishmillis, actually. And Greg Carville said that to us when we talked to him last week and again at media this week. He got a lot stronger this offseason season. And he also plays a ton of hockey at the senior level for Latvia. And so last year, I think there was a little bit of a wall that he ran into where he left the team to go play uh, at at World Juniors and had time playing with his national team before the season. And it was really nonstop, nonstop. But he's gotten a lot stronger. And he's always been incredibly skilled and a very savvy player. And I think you're looking at, you know, potentially a line of of Musa, Suniev, and Lashmilis. That's three sophomores, kind of like what UMass has done in the past with last year, they had a line of all juniors led by Lucas Mercury. I like it because again, it's it's rare to be able to visualize growth in that way, right? And I know you said we don't want to elongate things too much and it's hard because I think we both like to talk. But um, I'm really excited about about this sophomore class in particular because Jack Musa, put up higher scoring numbers last year than Bobby Trevino did in his freshman year. So and if he has more room to grow, then I'd love to see what that looks like. First of all, Lush Millis, great. Cause you know, you got the Bruins connection as well. I think there's a lot of people that are going to be watching him more and more. And then you mentioned the Musa connection, Jack Musa and Joey Musa, who is one of the experienced folks, uh, players that coach Carville has brought in. I think the, the sprinkling of transfers, the way that this whole uh, roster has been, um, has been composed is is the way that they want to do it they want to build from within and then add from from the outside for the needs that they have and so the fun to have two muses uh, on the team especially after what uh, jack did last year yeah i think it's going to be great and, and they have a verbal commitment uh, as greg carvel said yesterday from the the youngest musa as well and uh, i did ask carve if he's ever if there's anything fun or different about coaching brothers you know umass had anthony and mark del Gaizo. And I asked if there's any similarities with the Musas. And he said, yeah, you know, the Del Gaizo is really tough. And the Musas are really tough, too. And Joey, you know, played for for a good coach uh, at Dartmouth and, and Reed Cashman. And I think will be another kind of UMass has done well with with grad transfers last year. Liam Gorman, for example, um, you know, slotting in and, and using their experience. And I will say the only hard part is going to be looking at the back of the jerseys because you can't even just do the initial and Musa they're both (laughs) all three of them are J names. So (laughs) I'm sure, I'm sure one of us will mess that up at some point this year. And Musa scores, which one man? Well, which one Nate at the same time, you've got a pretty good chance of, uh, you you only got to know (laughs) one, right? So, all right. A couple more items here before we get to Lyndon, Lyndon Alger, who will be our guest and the leadership that, uh, that comes back in a fifth year player for coach Carvel. Last year, it felt like there were times where, hey, the goal is to score two, if we're lucky, three, and then, you know, have Robble stand on his head and goal, who is also one of those guys going into, you know, his his next evolution as a sophomore, which certainly should be a, a lot of room to grow there as a goaltender. Feels like maybe at least taking the comments from Coach Carvel that this could be a little bit different where that defense, as you mentioned, might be not as stout as it has been in years past, but the offensive weapons he has this season could kind of take them to the next level. Yeah. And I think I wouldn't say it's that the defense won't be as stout as, as years past. I think it's more like the scoring that has come from the blue line is probably going to be a little bit different because, you know, Scott Morrow had an all American freshman year or, you know, had one of the highest scoring freshman point totals and then continued in that, in that vein, you know, he was a top 10 point scorer all time um, at UMass and one of the top, I think the top scoring defenseman, I think you're going to see the same style, the structure D. I think this team has always been big on how they play, the structure. And it's going to be, you know, defense first in that way. But I think for the first time, you're going to have a forward core that's going to handle a real bulk of the scoring. And and so I think you're you're still going to want to play those sort of low scoring games um, because that's always been the Greg Carvel way. Even going back to the national championship team, it was defense first and the combo of, you know, I feel like Lindbergh night one, Matt Murray night two, but it should be exciting that the top three lines 
are all returners. And that really never happens in any sport in, in, the, in the college world, right? Like how rare is it to return an entire starting five or even one single five man lineup that got yeah. that playing time in basketball. So I think there might be times when you see yeah. inexperience, you're starting, you're going to be starting three freshman D in your, in your top six. But yeah. I think what you said there, thank you for correcting me. Not as the defense isn't really going to change, but more the, the, the mindset of a lot of, you know, where the points are coming from might, might be more so the case. And, you know, I think you've got quite a bit of fa- firepower as well. And I, I think, you look at the mix of it all, you know, you're picked what fifth, fourth in hockey East, depending on who you ask. Um, do you think, do you think that's warranted? I know obviously at the top, there's, there's quite a bit of talent in this conference yet again, but the, the opportunity for this team to go back to the tournament, I think is, is clearly there as we enter the season. Yeah. I mean, I think the goal is to make the NCAA tournament. Greg Carville said his goal is to, you know, make it to Boston garden, Boston, which yeah. is now TV. He said Boston garden. I will always say Boston Garden. Yeah, come on. It is TD Garden, but it's okay. <laughs> or, I mean, at least I'm not saying the Fleet Center, right? But, no, I think, look, this team is right. This team was picked right where they should be. I thought last year the the voters, the coaches, maybe underestimated UMass going into the year. But clearly, with the amount of talent, just the first-round draft picks alone, BC and BU are always going to be a tier above in terms of um, you know where they're at right now with their talent on paper. But raw talent doesn't always win games, right? And so the next three or four teams, the Providences, the Mains, the UMasses, and the Northeasterns, and possibly a team like UNH, who had a great year last year, maybe UVM with, with Steve Wheeler makes a step up, or Merrimack, who was you know a finalist two years ago. That's the next group, a group that has talent on paper, but also a lot of structure. So I think, look, BC, you know, everyone thought they were going to win the national championship game until... Denver put one by them midway through the the national championship game last year. They're going to be the team to beat because they're going to be, you know, I think hungry to avenge that. And they return almost all of their star players and they add the number one overall pick in next year's draft. So UMass is picked. I, I do agree with where they were picked. Um, and it's up to them to sort of live up to that and make sure the pairwise numbers favor them enough this spring. Cause Remember last year we were scoreboard watching. Until yeah, the and I know Carve Car said, "Hey, look, we need to address the fact that it needs to be in our hands next year when we get to March. That we can't be relying on other people to to win games. So I think that's great. You know, it's obviously one of the learning teaching points that he has, where it says every game matters. And I, I recall last year a couple of uh, tough shootout losses and uh, and overtime defeats as well. So um, hopefully that can that can uh, be something that they improve upon this year and. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, man. You and I can can come back and chat throughout this, and we'll keep people updated as to what's going on with the team. We'll check in with you before you go to uh, Vegas next week. And, uh, yeah, we're excited to to talk some hockey throughout the season, man. Jay, someone has to ask you a question, though. Who are you most excited for? Because in case, to let people know, you will be on the call of the UConn game, the Sacred Heart game, the, the two home games in the first 10 games yeah i'll plug in there you know i think folks know that tyler murray had been uh a a guy that has been calling our hockey for the most part over the last couple of seasons one of my good friends uh, is no longer available he'll be on the call for the new york knicks uh this this fall so uh we'll be um kind of plugging and and playing and i'll i'll jump in there but del elche man i love the name just in general to be able to say i think um I look at some of the the big body defensemen that they've been able to to bring in. I think I'm just excited to see the the way that they can kind of mesh together. And I think that's one of the secret sauces of of Coach Carve and his staff is that they're just so good at being able to to figure out what pieces to put together. You know, you look at the end of last year. I think it was what final 12 games. They kind of make some changes along the the lines, and all of a sudden they find what works for them really well, and uh, and they start to connect even more so. I think Robble is going to be amazing. And I think the expectations for him are incredibly high. And I think that rightfully so he'll, um, he can live up to those. And I think it's just going to be a lot of fun. So yeah, thanks for asking me a question, man, but I'm the, I'm the asker of questions. I will ask the questions. here. (laughs) All right. We'll say goodbye to you. We'll talk with the leader of this team. Captain Lyndon Alger here in just a second.
And we continue on. We've got the captain for Massachusetts hockey, Lyndon Alger, joining us now. Lyndon, how you doing, man? You excited for the season? Yeah, I'm very excited. Thank you for having me. What did go? What went through your mind when you get tapped as the the captain of this team? Um, it's it's truly such an honor um, to be in the conversation with some of the leaders I've been here for. Uh, is really special. Uh, and like I said, it's just, it's such a big honor. Who are some of those guys that maybe aren't here anymore, but have helped influence you not only on the ice, but in the leadership department as well? Uh, my freshman year, Jake Godet, um, Bobby Trevino, Eric Faith, uh, Ryan Ofco, Aaron Bollinger, all those guys uh, set a great example. And I'm gonna do my absolute best to to follow in their footsteps. I can hear UMass fans listening to all those names and going, "That guy was awesome. That guy was awesome." I mean, there's just so many that you just listed that made a significant impact on this program. I guess, what type of um, leader do you plan on on being, and and how do you you know how do you go about doing that? Uh, yeah, I, I like to to lead by example. Um, I try and do everything right, both on and off the ice. Um, and then uh, I'm a pretty vocal guy. Uh, I speak up when needed to um, and and just kind of approach every day, um, knowing that, that guys are looking up to me. And uh, I, I try to set a good example for everybody. What have you done, I guess, personally, professionally, from the end of last season to – the start now as we get into the beginning of this year this weekend um yeah i just this summer focused on uh elevating my game um working on my foot speed uh leg strength conditioning all that um and then from a, a leadership standpoint um just kind of trying to to work with the younger guys uh we have a lot of new d so i've been trying to catch them up to speed um, and kind of be that voice in the locker room that that the young guys look up to. Tell us about some of those guys. Nine freshmen coming in, as you mentioned. I think obviously people will talk this year about, you know, no Ufco, no Moro, but you've got um, certainly some some of uh, your abilities returning and some new guys coming in. What have you seen from from them in practice, and, and what it's what excites you about them? Yeah. Um, so Lucas Olvested, uh transfer from Denver. He's a great addition. Uh, he's a really good player, uh, plays hard without the puck, um, has a lot of skill. And then Francesco, he's he's a, a offensive D-man. Um, he's going to kind of fill one of those spots between uh, Scotty and, and Afi. Um, he, he brings a lot of offense to the table. Um, Larry Keenan, he's a, a big, big defenseman, very smooth skater. Um, I'm really excited to see see how he does this year. Uh, Finn Loftus, he's same thing. He's he's offensive, smooth skating, uh, really good with the puck, defends hard. Um, Charlie Lieberman, he's a, a really big boy. I think he's the biggest <laughs> defenseman. Um, he's a great player too. Um, and then we got uh, him listed at six five two thirty. Oh yeah, is yeah. that is that accurate? Yeah, yeah, he's a big dude, um, and I can't even imagine how big he's going to be his senior year. But <laughs> um, yeah, so so the decor, um, we got a pretty big decor this year, and um, we're trying to get the guys caught up to speed, playing hard, um, playing to our Id- identity, and uh, yeah, so far so good. They're they're doing everything right, and I'm super excited to to see watch them out on the ice. Can you? I- give guys a, a message as a player that you know go back to your early days you not a ton of uh of ice time early on in your career and, and then you know last couple of seasons that continues to grow into what you are today what message can you send through that if there's guys that maybe don't see the ice as much as they want to right away yeah um so like you said um i've kind of kind of seen it all i've lived um through some of that stuff, kind of uh, coming in, didn't play a ton, got injured my junior year. Um, 
So kind of something that helped me was, was every day showing up, trying to be the same, um, check in on guys, bring positive energy, um, kind of not beating myself up too much about where I'm at in the lineup or some of the things I can't control. So um, usually when, when guys aren't playing or uh, whatever the case may be, I can relate to them. Um, I usually pull them aside, kind of, kind of talk to them about uh, how they're doing. Um, maybe they, there's certain things that they think they can work on uh, to help them get in the lineup and I'll help talk them through some of that stuff. Cause that's kind of what I did. I, I relied heavily on a lot of the older guys um, an alumni that helped me out a lot is Colin Felix. Mm -hmm. uh, we played a pretty similar style. So I kind of latched onto him and, and always went to him for um, advice. And, and that's something that I really want to do for these younger guys as well. Do you find yourself like in a bunch of different group text messages and uh, exchanges with guys that played here at times? I mean, how much do you keep in touch with some of the guys you've mentioned and, and, kind of being that connection point for guys that are no longer in, you know, on the team. Yeah. Um, so our national championship, uh, team, our group chat is active every single day. <laughs> I don't think there's a day that goes by where someone isn't saying something. Um, but pretty much every team that I've played for here, um, we all stay in touch. Uh, we, we talk a lot about, uh, building our, our off ice connections and unifying the group. And um, that doesn't go away when, when guys move on and graduate or, or sign pro contracts. Like we have a very tight knit group every year and um, that, that usually uh, stands true even, even once guys are gone. What ex excites you about this group of guys heading into this season? Um, I'm really excited to um, – play play with our forwards we have probably the deepest four lines I've ever seen in college um like top to bottom our our forwards are very skilled very talented um they play hard and uh it's it's our d it's up to our d to, to kind of get up to speed and um distribute pucks to our forwards and um, hopefully they're going to score a lot of goals for us this year. You've had the pleasure of, of playing in front of some really good goaltenders. What did you witness from Michael Robel last year? And do you think there's a, another step that, that he can take entering his sophomore season? Yeah. Um, he, he had an amazing year last year. Um, and he's such a young guy. He's so raw, um, so talented and, he reminds me a lot of, of Philae Lindbergh and Matt Murray. Just uh, He kept us in a lot of games that we maybe shouldn't have been in, stole some games for us, comes up big when we need him to. Um, and, yeah, I think he's going to have a really big year this year. I know you can't look past this weekend, but you do have a trip to Las Vegas coming up. That's got to be, I know, pretty fun. I know it's a business trip, but still uh, some top-level competition at the Icebreaker Tournament. You know, this non-conference schedule as it was last year, year before, very difficult. What do you think about the competition that you're going to have to face, you know, in the non-conference slate? Yeah, um, it'll be good to to see how we stack up um, against some some teams that aren't in the Hockey East. Um, I like that that we're, we get, we're playing this tournament early in the season. Um, so it'll be good for us. Um, it's always fun to travel. Um, guys spend a lot of time with each other and uh yeah we're, we're really looking forward to it and uh hopefully we come out on top of the tournament academically what have you accomplished here at umass and what are some of the things that you like to do when you're not focused on hockey um yeah so i studied business management um for my my four years here and now I'm working on a business analytics certificate, um, which has been fun so far. Uh, me, me and Joey Musa are in uh, all three classes together. Um, and then outside of the rink, um, I've I've got into cooking this year. Like I really cooked a lot last year, but uh, 
this year I, I've kind of stepped my game up and um, I'm really trying to dial in the nutrition and uh, take care of that stuff. Me and um, Lucas Mercury have been going back and forth, sending pictures of our, our lunches and dinners. Is, is there a dish that you think that you've mastered or that, you know, you think, hey, this is this is my go to? Right now I'm on the uh, the spaghetti squash, sweet potatoes and, and ground beef. It's nothing special, but I love it. We're yeah. in we're in squash season too, man. So that's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. We're gonna have to see some. Do you post those on your Instagram or social media? No, no, I don't post any, but I, I can get you a picture or something. All right. We'll have to see if we can find some. Lyndon, thanks so much for taking the time. Good luck throughout the season. And hopefully we'll talk to you down the road. We really appreciate it, man. Thank you for having me. All right, UMass hockey is in action this weekend. The first home game will be on the 18th of October against Sacred Heart, right there behind where Lyndon Alger is sitting inside the Mullen Center. We'll see you there. Take care.